okay welcome back to the new lecture in the last lecture we have seen what is meant by research design what is need of research design what is meaning of research design and what are the concept relating to research design this we have listed last time now in this particular lecture we are going to discuss one by one what is meant by research design let's go for this one first concept related to research design is dependent and independent variables what is meant by dependent and independent variables let's check why it is important to study dependent and independent variable because in the research design we are going to decide how to collect data how to analyze data and when we are collecting data and analyzing data it's very important you should know what is meant by dependent variable and independent variable so for that purpose we are going to discuss what is meant by dependent and independent variable if one variable depends upon or is a consequences of other variable it is termed as dependent variable it's quite simple and by the name also we can understand what is meant by dependent variable if one of the variable is dependent on other then it is called a dependent variable and variable that is antecedent and antecedent to the dependent variable is termed as a independent variable or it's a simple meaning it's the very hard words are used but independent variable those which are not dependent on any of the variable that's called as independent variable that's very simple for instance if we say that the height depends upon age then a height is dependent variable and age is independent variable this is very simple example given as we know that the a child height or a person height depends upon age and we are having some standard data that with this particular age this much height must be there so height is dependent on age so height is called as what dependent variable we can say this as a dependent variable whereas variable whereas h is an independent variable obviously further if in addition to being and dependent upon age height is also depend upon individual sex then height is dependent on variable and age sex independent variable okay so this is example of dependent and independent variable continuous and non continuous variable let's check phenomena which can take an quantitative different values even in decimal point is called as a continuous variable let's read one phenomena which can take a quantitatively different value even in decimal point so if quantitatively you are taking continuously values in a decimal points also then it's called as continuous variable example each it's a continuous variable but all variable are not continuous if they can only be expressed integer value they are non continuous variable or in a statistical language the discrete variable is also called as continuous variable example the number of children the number of children is not continuous variable because it may not go on increasing given not go on decreases continuously it's just a variable it's just variable the person to person it will get varies but that number of children will not go on varying continuously for a single person and that's why this is called as non continuous variables that's why it's called as non continuous variable now extraneous variables independent variable that are not related to purpose of the study but may affect the dependent variable are termed as extraneous variable you can see here independent variable that are not related to purpose of the study the variable which are not related to purpose of study but affect on dependent variable it's not related to the study but it affect on dependent variable is called as extraneous variable is called as extraneous variable for example example is given suppose the researcher want to test on hypothesis that there is a relationship between children's gain in social studies and achievement and their self concepts in this case the self concept is an independent variable and social studies achievement is the dependent variable intelligence may also may as well affect on the social studies achievement but since it is not related to the purpose of the study undertaken by the researcher it will be termed as a extraneous variable here you have to understand what is the purpose of study what is the dependent variable and what is the extraneous variable also for example suppose the researcher want to hypothesis of there there is a relationship between children's gain in social studies achievement and their self concept so self concept and children's gain in social studies achievement these are two terms which are 
related with each other that is the study in this case self concept is independent variable out of this the self concept is independent variable it's not dependent on anything okay intelligence may as well affect on social studies achievement here intelligence may achieve it on social study achievement but since it is not related to the purpose of study the intelligence is not at all related to the purpose but it can affect on self concept and that's why this is called as extraneous variable that's why it is called as extraneous variable okay then control what is meant by control one important characteristic of good research design is to minimize the influence or effect of ex extraneous variable so we should try to reduce extraneous variable because if extraneous variables are more then the research will be get affected more and more so for avoiding that for avoiding that is very important that you should have minimum extraneous variables the technical term control is used when we design the study minimizing the effect of extraneous variable independent variables in experimental research the term control is used refer and restrain experimental conditions so here a control means what control means you are controlling the extraneous variable so this extraneous variable this extraneous variable that should be minimum as minimum as possible if it is minimum then there is effect on the independent parameter will be very less so we should have minimum and minimizing this refers to the control of research minimizing this is called control of research now confounded relationship when the dependent variable is not free from influence of extraneous variable the relationship between dependent and independent variable is said to be confounded by the extraneous variables you have to understand very carefully when dependent variable is not free from influence of if dependent variable is dependent on extraneous variable then the relationship between dependent and independent is called as confounded by extraneous variable you have to remember that ki if dependent variable is depend on on extraneous variable then there is a confounded relationship otherwise it will not be present now research hypothesis means what when a prediction or a hypothesized relationship is to be tested by scientific method then termed as research hypothesis now what is meant by hypothesis that already we have discussed hypothesis is a statement which is supported by a theory literature review and we predict that at the end of our research what will happen that particular statement is called as hypothesis and this hypothesis if you test it by using a scientific method then it is called as a research hypothesis the research hypothesis is a predictive statement that relates an independent variable and dependent variable another definition is given here it's a statement which relates independent variable and dependent variable now what is dependent variable what is independent variable that already you are knowing it usually a research hypothesis must contain at least one independent and one dependent variable that's condition one dependent and one independent variable that must contain in the hypothesis predictive statement which are not to be objectively verified or relationship that are assumed but not to be tested are not termed as research hypothesis okay now experimental and non experimental hypothesis testing research means what when the purpose of research is to test research hypothesis it is termed as hypothesis testing research okay it can be the experimental design or non experimental design research in which independent variable is manipulated is term as experimental hypothesis testing research see when we can say experimental hypothesis testing research that the research in which independent variable this independent variable is manipulated independent variable is manipulated then we can say experimental hypothesis testing research okay a research in which an independent variable is not manipulated now here independent variable is not manipulated is called as non experimental hypothesis testing it's called as non experimental hypothesis testing okay so if it is not not manipulated then it's called as non experimental hypothesis and if it is manipulated then it's called as experimental hypothesis testing research experimental and control groups 
in an experimental hypothesis testing research when a group is exposed to usual condition it is termed as a control group group is exposed to the usual condition usual means what which we have decide decide in the research design so whatever we have decided in the research design and that group that group is termed as a control group but when group is exposed to some novel or special condition when we are going to expose to the special condition then it is termed as a experimental group now there are two groups control group and experimental group what is control group if the hypothesis is exposed to the usual conditions then it is called as control group if hypothesis is exposed to the experimental uh, to the special condition then it is called as experimental group what is meant by treatment the different conditions under which experimental and control group are put are usually referred as a treatment <coughs> different conditions under which experimental and control group are put now we have seen what is meant by experimental group and control group if these two groups are put into different condition then it is called as treatment for example if you want to determine through an experimental the comprehensive impact of three variable of fertilizers on the yield of wheat in that case the three variables of fertilizers will be treated as a three treatments <coughs> So, if you want to cultivate a wheat, and for cultivating a wheat, if you want to study the impact of three fertilizers, now these three fertilizers itself is called as a treatment for the research. What's meant by experiment? The process of examining the truth of a statistical hypothesis related to some research problem is known as experiment. The process of examining the truth of statistical hypothesis. If you are examining statistical hypothesis related to some research problem relating to some research problem then it is called as experiment experiments can be of two type absolute experiment and comparative experiment absolute experiment and comparative experiment these are two types that you are knowing okay so experimental unit the predetermined plot or the block where a different treatment are used the predetermined plots or blocks where the treatment are used are known as experimental units such experimental unit must be selected very carefully now what is meant by experimental unit or there may be multiple unit that's called as units the predetermined plots or blocks where different treatments are used it's a predetermined plot means it's decided earlier where you are going to use a different treatment then it's called as experimental unit okay thank you very much